Everybody, welcome. Here we go. It's that time again. Matt Connerton unleashed, and we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, we are not on Comcast 97 today due to a technical problem, but uh, hopefully that'll be resolved soon. I just uh, texted Peter White. So maybe he'll have an answer for us. But but of course, uh, we are on WMNH 95.3. And hello to all of our online listeners across the nation and around the globe. You can go to my website, mattconnerton.com, for all of your live streaming options, social media links, contact info, show archives, et cetera, et cetera. And I am not alone. Got a couple people here. Hello, hello. Hello, how are you? I am present and accounted for. Yes, yes. And, uh, well, uh, should we go ahead and introduce this other person or, or make them wait? Oh, I think we should do it. <laughs> do it. Grab the bull by the horn. Let's make it happen. Oh, my goodness. That's a lot of pressure, but all right. No pressure. No pressure. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> And welcome to Easy's Playhouse. Easy, yeah. yeah. that's my boy. Hey, yo, Easy. Boy, you should have known by now. Easy does it. Easy. Tune in weekdays, 4 to 6, for Easy G Unleashed, where we set aside labels like King of All Farts and Entertainment Reporter and discuss a wide variety of topics, such as tank tops, goldenrod, Amanda McCarthy, and so much more. What's going on over there, Eric? I'm having trouble with the headphones. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you need me to come help you? I'll be all right. Mm. You sure? Yep. A little rusty here. That's okay. You're forgiven. It's been a while. All right. Oh, yeah. It's better. <laughs> Put that microphone right up in front of you. Oh. <laughs> For a second there, I thought you were uh, uh, leaving already. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. All of a sudden, yeah. you're, all of a sudden you're taking off the headphones and packing yeah. up. I'm like, uh, yeah, maybe I should have came in today because now I got Peter a little mad at me. So he doesn't want me coming in tomorrow because he ruins the surprise. Oh no, really? Yeah, so I already got him a little mad at me. Oh uh, well, so we have a new oh, scandal. Sur- scandalous. Ruined surprise gate. But no, yeah. it's a, we have our yeah, but we got to have our surprise. So I said I'll come in another day. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think that's really beef. Oh, 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 it sounds like beef to me. Y'all is beef. I probably should have just came in tomorrow. I get a little ahead of myself. So if you're listening, Peter, I'm sorry. Well, I'm happy you're here, and I liked getting to have the surprise. We're not chopped liver, you know. True. Because we're the second shift. Mm-hmm. That's right. You still having hearing issues over there, Easy? Uh, yeah, I can hear better now. Oh, okay. I was going to say. <laughs> I, was only, I was only hearing out of one <laughs> one ear and the other one. Uh-huh. Well, perhaps you uh, lost your hearing in one of your ears. Yeah, right here it was pretty good, believe it or not. And then it came back. That could be, you know, a little uh, spontaneous uh, deafness. Uh, Scott Robinson in the chat room says, I have a lot of Hulkster questions. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> so we do have a guest who's going to be joining us via Skype in uh, just a couple of moments. Billy Painter is going to be uh, Skyping in with us. And, uh, and then, of course, after that, we'll get caught up with EZG. And we may have another surprise, too, on today's show. Another Maybe. individual might be joining us. So we'll oh, see. Oh, wow. Yes, who yes. Who could it be now? I have a feeling I know who it is. Really? Well, but, don't, uh, but I'm not going to ruin it. But don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. Now, what, so what did Peter say to you exactly in the text? I'm just, I'm so nosy. Well, he said the, uh, well, he asked me if I was on the match show, and then he texted me a little while, and he said, the, well, since you're on the match show, the, uh, 
You got kind of ruins the surprise, so. Oh wow, you blew it. Yeah, I should. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, I got a, I got ahead of myself. I should have just came on his show and then. You're... It's hard to pull off two surprises in the same location, dude. Yeah, yeah, true. I got, I got a little, I got a little carried away. I guess your uh, <laughs> your foray back into radio has already been, uh, already yeah. been. Uh, Leave it to me to get mixed up with uh, on my first day back. He's mixing it up already, folks. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't mean to, but woohoo! Those things happen, I guess. Mix it up. <laughs> Ooh, scandalous. Shout outs to Kyle Heavey who just came and saved the day, and he's uh, putting us on ninety seven. Thank you, Kyle. Yep. Yeah, I texted uh, Peter, and uh, Peter just texted me and said, Kyle Heavey is on his way to help you. So Kyle Heavey, of course, host of Off the Mark Sports here. On, and a uh, technician. On WMNH. Thank you so uh, much, Kyle. Oh, he fixed it. Thank uh, you, Kyle. Uh, yes. fixed it. There we go. Kyle is the hero of the day. Perhaps I'll play that later by Metallica. Go for it. It's a good thing I didn't leave like I was supposed to 10 minutes ago. I was able to help you guys out. So that kind of worked out quite well. That's never happened to me before. That particular thing where I couldn't get into that program, that has never happened to me before my entire time here. Maybe they're starting to fire you. Very, uh, very, you should yeah, be concerned. Yeah, yeah that's true. Maybe, maybe they're, they're trying to get, maybe that's a sign they're trying. What, what have you heard, Kyle? Is that, uh, <laughs> should I be worried? Is that a sign that they're uh, trying to, to give me the heave ho? Uh, it's actually all my fault, so oh. we, you cannot take any blame for that. It's all oh. me. Wow. I, uh, I had a nice time in Boston last week, and, uh, well, my phone is still down there, so I've lost oh, everything. No. Oh, no. I heard about that. Yeah. I lost everything, and uh, so I had to get a new phone. It needed to get the Log Me In, which is the main app that we use for the Facebook Lives and everything like that yes. here at uh, Manchester Public Television. And uh, to be able to film the games uh, like tonight's uh, big matchup between the Little Green and Crusaders, we uh, needed to figure out why my phone would not connect the new app. So um, we had to change one of the passwords. Oh, okay. And unfortunately, we did not think to come in here and change it up for you all. So. Oh, okay. Um, oh. Yeah, because I've never that. That's the first time that that particular program has ever asked me for a password. So yeah, I, was, so I was like, oh. Uh -oh. Again, it all comes back to me. Um, they don't trust I'm you not, with it. I'm not sure if I, it was in the cup holder. I, oh. you, you know, one of those, um, you know, portable chargers that you have. They're, they're, I don't know if I have one on me right now. Portable, like the socket, plug yes. it in the phone. Well, I mean, it, the wall. It's it's in my jacket upstairs. It's um, it basically it uh, holds like a probably about 30 hours of charge, so you can just oh, take yeah, your yeah. charging cord and put it into your phone. Yep. I thought that was my phone, so I got up and left, oh, no. and my phone was in the cup holder, and then they were, never found it. So someone obviously took it, and hope they had fun. You know, and they, my phone was a success, so it's probably worth fifty bucks. But uh, uh. it kind of has been a bit of frustration. I've loved it, and part of me has been like, you know what, Woosa, like I clear my head, like I don't need all. I, I had that phone for what five years. What did you say, years. Moose here? Woosa. 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 Relax. Woosa. Woosa. That's a new term for me. Woosa. Did you get a new phone? Woosa. Say it over again. It makes you feel Woosa. good. Woosa. Woosa. There you go. All together now. Ready? Woosa. 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 Did you get a new Woosa. phone, uh, Kyle? Yeah, I got a brand new phone, <laughs> but I only have like 30 numbers now, so it's kind of great uh. compared to the 928 I had before. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I had that problem. I had over 800 contacts. Yeah, between coworkers, celebrities, Red Sox players. And then they players, crossed over, like, and they like duplicated in the very beginning when you could first hook Facebook up. And all the Facebook <laughs> listeners, I, pr I have not gone to Verizon to try to get the cloud fixed. I've been just kind of going with the flow of things. I've been My life's been Woosa. absolutely amazing. Like, I can't say that I'm not going to let losing some contacts or pictures really ruin my... my it's, uh, it's all about yeah. living your life in the present, not looking back at the past of all these pictures that you had. Mm -hmm. I'm still getting to go do some phenomenal things. And, you know, it's life's yeah. still going to be fine. Life's, yeah. I'm, I'm, no one's hurt. I'm still able to... Go film a basketball game tonight. I'm still able to talk to you guys all here. Everything's fine. Well, that's uh, that's excellent. Uh, and now we got you live here on Facebook Live. So. I, I appreciate it. Well, I was live on Facebook oh, Live. You were I, I just wasn't on Comcast 97. Oh, oh, yes. so there yes, we yes, go. Yes. All yes, right. Yes. You're, hello to the viewers on, you know, 97. Yes. I do know there's a few folks who watch us there, like I think Ron and, and other people. But oh, I don't know. No wonder why Ron's like, ah, I didn't. I don't, I, don't, I don't follow your show on Facebook, but I appreciate listening to you guys. So um, to now know, maybe I 
I don't know. There's a lot of buttons to press at 10 in the morning on Sundays. I can tell you Some that. Some people just do a thing mm. called a radio. Correct. Like Rob. Rob yeah. Acevedo does a great job without yes. having to use any just sort of technology. On, just on radio. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. No visuals. Grand you state have to of mind. imagine it yourself. That's right. <laughs> well, we should uh, we should Skype in our guest, but uh, I mean, Kyle, you're welcome to stick around. No, like I said, I was I was getting ready to, to head out to with all my equipment, so ah. I, Peter just timed that really well that I was <laughs> I, putting on my jacket. And I was like, oh, never mind. I'll go pick this out, and so yeah, yeah. you no. know, have a great rest of the show, hey, guys. Quick, I'm glad I could be um, uh, of quick substance question, here. Quick question before you leave: What do you think of uh, we get a cause Skype as guest? Though. April Cushman last Monday at the, at the show, the <laughs> national anthem. <laughs> Easy, he's back. That's, that's okay. You can, you, you can you, you can answer. You may answer him. The okay, question. this isn't my show here. This is Matt Conjun on leave. You can you can, you can answer him. I know this is important. This has probably been burning in his mind asking you this question. I thought he was going to ask you if you'd ever been to Canada, but uh, that's his uh, standard thing. But uh, yeah, you can answer him. Yeah, I um I, I I knew as soon as I heard the name, I immediately said Easy G is going to light up like a light bulb right now. And so I had to make sure I took a picture of her singing the national anthem from my thanks to uh um <laughs> Stefan oh Philbrick gosh. for the free Celtics tickets. That was wow. courtesy wow, of cool. you know, Stefan Philbrick, so I appreciate um a phenomenal time. Because I went alone, because I was like, I, I don't want to have a shadow following me trying to find my phone, because <laughs> I went to different spots to find my phone, I was able to sneak down and was uh, four rows from the court. Um, they sweat a lot. I can tell you that. Those basketball <laughs> players sweat a lot more when you're that close to them. They smell like a locker room um, down there. And the Celtics ended up winning by 53. They're oh. up by 60 points at one point. It was an all-around great time. And you know what? Got home safely. Didn't have a phone. Got a new phone. Nice, you know. Yeah. We're here. Yeah, yeah. We're here. Absolutely. So it's a weird thing that, yes, I mean, sometimes you, I might miss like, oh, it'd be kind of cool to have those stories, memories back. Eh, I'm going to make new ones and life will keep going on. So That's right. Uh, Easy G, I'm sorry. I'm going to leave you before you ask any more questions. <laughs> and uh, I'll be back. Uh, oh! The, the basketball season will be, uh, will be ending pretty soon here. So I'll come back and be a, a guest for a full show with my voice being 100% better as it was um right now with having talk having to talking so much over the weekend at the <laughs> black ice pond hockey tournament so cheers guys all right awesome. kyle all right, thank you voice. all right kyle heavey from off the mark sports uh leaves us and uh oh by the way we opened for anyone who uh doesn't know we did open with uh the wkrp in cincinnati theme song because uh, uh howard hessman passed away over the weekend yeah, so rest in peace rest in peace johnny fever i loved uh loved that show when i was a kid me too every, <laughs> thanks kyle every week i watched it all right, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and uh I'm going to Skype in our guest. Um and uh if you'd like to join us, well let me do this uh because of course he'll be on Skype so the phone line will be open 603-250-6007 if you'd like to enter the conversation that we are about to begin. 603-250-6007. You can also text me at 617-917-4476. Tweet me at Matt Connerton or send an email to Matt at mattconnerton.com and of course you can interact and opine in the facebook live chat but the best thing to do of course so that we may hear and enjoy your dulcet tones is to give us a call at 603-250-6007 i love how like nobody ever talks when i do this like, no, I can like talk. this is the one time Wait, every, no. everyone yeah, that's not true <laughs> I do it all the time. Everyone, I didn't realize whenever, you were turning around like whenever that. I go now. To, whenever I go to Skype somebody in, everyone that is not, it's not true. Just, it's not just you. Everyone in the room always goes dead silent. Most of the time, I don't do that. I just honestly was kind of in my own little space for me, a moment me, there, and me, I lost let's it. Let's see if we've got Billy on the line. <laughs> Billy, are you there? What's going on? Oh, good, good. Okay. Hey, how are you, my friend? Hey, I'm doing well. Coming off the heels of one hell of a weekend. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, so, uh, Billy, of course, has been on the show uh, a number of times, and uh, uh, Billy um, Billy does a lot online and, and uh, is very active with uh, podcasting and so forth. But um, I thought Monday, this would be a good day to have Billy on uh, to talk about what he did over the weekend, because, you, you know, you're here with me on Mondays, Jenny, and you know a lot more about this subject than I do. Yeah, wrangle me into stuff. <laughs> This is what I need to start my week off. <laughs> and then there's uh, Easy G on the couch, who uh, presumably knows nothing about the subject, but uh, will no, we'll no doubt. Uh, Stop but, it. But, but, but I'm sure, uh, Eric, you would like to ask. Uh, did, did you want to ask Billy a question up front? 
Uh, I can't think of anything right now. I thought you'd want to ask him if he's been to Canada. Why? Uh, Why? No, I only, I only, <laughs> only asked that for a performers. Oh, Singing right. performers. That's right. All right. Well, well I feel like I missed something here. Yeah, well, you know, he, uh, Eric usually likes to ask people if they've uh, performed in Canada. Well, I ain't performed in Canada, but uh, I have been up there. In fact, uh, as I can recall, I had to go through New Hampshire to get there. Ah, very well, there good. Go. Very yes, good. Yes, yes, very popular to go to New Hampshire through. I mean, go there through New Hampshire. <laughs> yes. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> I know how to speak English sometimes. Oh, yeah, God, help the, me. <laughs> uh, I took a trip up to Montreal, so. Oh, yeah. very nice. Very nice. I've been to Canada, but I've never been to Montreal. I, I only went to boring parts. I got to go there as part of a delegation from New Hampshire in a, in a government thing. We were like, Oh, that's right. We were representing. That's right. Yeah. Was that that was about Northern Pass, right? That was about Northern Pass. Yes. Yes. Uh, right. Secretly, it was supposed. It was billed to us about about um, it being more about uh, border security. Like we went through the whole customs thing to see how both sides were and how they work and how terribly sad America's side is compared to Canada. And um, the next thing we knew, we're at the headquarters with the vice president telling us all about this and why we need to support it. Yes. So we shredded him. <laughs> By the way, uh, Nemi is in the chat room and says, wow, Skype call quality is great. Maybe I should try that instead of the phone. Uh, studio side is hard to hear. Yeah, um, you know, but of course, you know, Billy's got professional equipment too, so that always helps. Um, all right, Billy, so uh, wh what did you do over the weekend? What was your uh, what was your big weekend? Well, of course, uh, you had Mike Miller on in the past, and uh, I've been helping him out with his campaign. And uh, for him to show some gratitude, he enrolled me in the uh, a tactical training class uh, with a company called Watchman Tactical Training. They're out of Boise, Idaho. And basically, uh, it was basic training because uh, I'm going to get my uh, concealed carry permit and uh, went there to uh, learn what I don't know. Very good. And this was uh, this was both days, uh, Saturday and Sunday? Yes, it was. Now, you said something the other day about uh, when you called in um, about how you can get a— um, does this training lead you to a to be able to get a license that is recognized in 45 states? Is that correct? That is correct. So is that a is but who issues that license? Is it issued by the state of Idaho? It's issued by the state of Idaho and good for, in about 45 states. Uh, the no fly zones, of course, uh, New York, California, Oregon, just to name a few. Okay. All right. Um, so it, how did, because there's no, there's no federal license, right? So how does that work? Do the states that recognize the license, they just, is there some sort of a compact that they sign on to? Or, I mean, do you, do you know the, um, it's you, reciprocity and it's based upon, um, each individual state has certain requirements. Like New Hampshire doesn't have reciprocity with a lot of states because we don't have the requirements that those states do. Yeah. Uh, Massachusetts has a lot of requirements. Um, for example, some states require fingerprinting, some don't. Some require um, classes, others don't. Yeah. So it varies state to state. Idaho has a number of states. I, I thought it was like 20 or so. But, you know, of course, you live there. You'd know better than me. But <laughs> um, because theirs is so extensive to get, they have more reciprocity with other states. Like oh, okay. Vermont has no reciprocity with anybody because they have no license. There's no way to get a license or a permit yeah. in, in Vermont. It just doesn't exist. It never has. Yeah. Um, now, oh, go, to, go ahead, Billy. To my knowledge, too, I believe New Hampshire it does have constitutional carry, if I'm not mistaken. We have constitutional carry. We also have concealed carry licenses, not permits. And um, we are a shall-issue state, not a may-issue state. So we actually have quite extensive constitutional carry here. We also rewrote our constitution in the 1980s, making it more specific about the right to personal protection. What does that mean, shall issue versus will issue, or shall issue versus may issue? May rather? issue means they may issue you a permit, but they may not. Um, in Massachusetts, there are may issue states. So you, in this case, you apply with your local police chief, and your local police ch chief has an arbitrary decisional factor. They can literally just say, yeah, I don't like you. Nope. 
they'll say they don't do that, but it, bull. Um, the truth is some people take it very personally and, and they decide who in town gets to protect themselves or not. Here in New Hampshire, if you are if you are legally allowed to possess and own a firearm, you are legally allowed to have a concealed carry license. They can't just say no. If you meet all the legal requirements, which is basically you meet the federal standards of being able to have a firearm, you're not a felon, you're not, you know, you know, anything like that, then they have to give it to you. Okay. They don't get yeah. that choice as far as whatever they decide to come out of their head with. It, it's actually in law, in statute. Okay. Uh, Nemi in the chat says New Hampshire licenses are reciprocal in uh, roughly 15 states, if she remembers correctly. Yeah, I don't remember how many it was. But yeah. you have to get past states that you're not legal in to get to the ones that you are legal in. Yeah. There's no straight legal way to go from New Hampshire to um, <laughs> our next local state. Yeah. Outside of Vermont. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> So what what is the, the situation in Vermont? They just have nothing like you just you can. Vermont just... has never had that ever, and yeah. and they don't have the Wild West, and it's not insane there. They have never required a piece of paper issued by the government. It's always been if you can legally carry and possess, you can legally carry and possess. Yeah. The downside is because they don't have any paperwork available, you don't get the reciprocity in other states. Okay. okay. So you may have to apply for those states individually. Yeah. I got a question for you, Jenny. You know, all the states, they seem to have a lot of uh, gun violence, and, and uh, we don't seem to have that in New Hampshire. Is that because a lot of people have guns here? In part, an armed society can be a very polite society. I, I would I would absolutely venture to guess that criminals do think twice in New Hampshire because people can defend themselves. Big difference than Massachusetts where, you know, a guy breaking into a house can bust through a skylight and then sue the homeowner for his broken leg. We don't, you know, our laws are different. Some states are more insane. Now, Crystal in the Facebook live chat has a question for you, uh, Billy. Uh, she says, if you get this license to carry in 45 states, would you theoretically, I think I know the answer to this already, but would you theoretically have to get insurance as well, uh, for example, if that law passes in California? Um, no, not uh, if, if I was in California, yes. But then again, uh, you know, um Gun laws are very, very, very restrictive in the state of California. And, mm -hmm. uh, and from what I understand, too, and I'm going to talk to a buddy of mine who's actually in the area, but uh, I don't think that uh, particular law is, um, is, is valid throughout the whole state of California. I think it's uh, just mainly focused on San Jose and the Silicon Valley. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um... And Mel McMell says, uh, once again, Vermont is awesome. And she said, I'm much more polite to someone holding a gun uh, or uh, knives, too. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Well, it's not the idea, but it's not, it's not the idea of even having it visible. I, I personally, when I would work with women who were doing self-protection and so forth, we talked about not being visible with your firearm, not mm -hmm. letting the criminal have a knowledge that you have a means to defend yourself. Right. Does, if that's the case and somebody shows up in a business and tend to do harm and they can see you carrying, you're target number one, buddy. You are tar you're not you're yeah. not necessarily the deter deterrent. You are necessarily the first target. If you are carrying concealed, you're better able to protect yourself because you have the ability to defend yourself, which the criminal and most often a lot with women don't expect the fight back. Mm hmm. Yeah, Nemi in the chat says, we have knife 2A as well. Thank you for your service, the Honorable Representative Coffee. That is true, yes. Very nice. Yes, yes, absolutely. But, uh, but that's, a, that's a whole other issue today. Let's, <laughs> let's, think of, uh, let's talk about this one. I really, it, and the other thing, it's not 45 states. It's like 20. There's no such thing as a license that guarantees 45 states. Oh. It's just not happening. It's not, we'd love to have it, but it's not there yet. It's just not there. Well, I wonder, so, and, you know, you, you, raise this question jenny were there um the class that you took over the weekend billy were there women in the class as well yes there were um uh, of course i think the guys outnumbered them because there i think there were only uh there were only two if i can recall but yes there were women there okay yeah and how many uh how many people in the class uh total do you know roughly it was a small class probably about between 12 and 15 of us okay including uh, one gentleman from Iran who's been in the United States for the last 20-plus years. Okay, okay. 
Wow. Interesting. Yeah, Interesting. yeah. So now, wh- what kind of things did you learn uh, at, at, this, uh, at this class? Because I imagine, obviously, you know, you're someone who already has experience with firearms. Uh, what, what additional things were you able to learn? Well, let me answer your question by saying this. Uh, as I said when I called in on Friday, that, um, you know, from uh, as a kid, I was trained with rifles. And if I had a pistol, it was merely a revolver. So my experience with uh, any semi-automatic pistols or semi-automatic weapons in general is is I'm a relative novice with that and um and I I, I learned it really quickly because I had I had actually bought my uh, brand new uh 9mm Glock 48 from uh, Mike Miller and I uh, I met him at uh, at an indoor range in Meridian Idaho where uh went in there and uh, went, uh, go pop off a few rounds and uh, the little things got a kick, let me tell you. And um, I'm <laughs> first time I'm firing it and I've basically got my, you know, I got uh, my uh, hind knuckle of my thumb right there cupped around uh, the pistol and uh, it's kicking back and hitting that knuckle and that hurt. Ooh, that does sound <laughs> bad, na- bad hand placement. That does it, that, that <laughs> happens, but it's, yeah, it's, Yes. It's a skill. Yeah. It's yeah. a skill. It takes a lot yeah. of practice to pick up your firearm and being able to hold it correctly. It's it's so different from a revolver, which I'm so used to. And, um, you know, then Mike showed me, oh, oh, put the meaty part of your hand against that part of the pistol, and it's not going to be so bad. And so I started making a habit of doing that, and I, I gradually got better with that. And... Um, of course, the next day uh, the class started, and uh, you know um, there were four essential rules that uh, are just basic common sense and uh, and universal. I mean, and my instructor uh, Carrie Lambois, I I think I said I hope hopefully I didn't uh, butcher his name. But uh, he said we had to memorize these rules. I haven't fully memorized them verbatim, so I got them right here in front of me. Rule number one, treat every gun you touch as if it was loaded. Yes. Rule yep. number two, never point the muzzle of a gun at anything you do not intend to destroy. Mm-hmm. Rule number three, finger off the trigger until the sights are on the target. You have made the decision to shoot. Rule number four, be aware of your target, what lies in front and beyond it. Oh, that, yeah. la- that last one I hadn't heard, but that makes a lot of sense. Well, bullet doesn't <laughs> stop traveling just necessarily because it hits something. You can go right through that and keep going. Right. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Well, yeah, you need to know what's beyond that. You're hey. responsible if there's some little kid back there and you shoot them. Hey, uh, Billy, did you hear about that? It happened a while back. There was uh, supposed to be a, a prop of a gun on the... Um, on a studio over in Hollywood, and it come to find out there was a bullet in there. Somebody got killed. Did you hear about that? I think Billy's heard about that. Oh, oh, <laughs> I, I yeah. would think so. Alec Baldwin, yes. Actually, that happened in New Mexico. And right. shortly after that happened, I, I actually know an actor, or he's a retired actor, who has done a few movies and has worked on that set in New Mexico. So, oh. Yeah, I, I still think they're investigating, but it seems like a, something, something went wrong. <laughs> Well, clearly, yes, yes. Live animal, not live animal, live ammo on a set is wrong, period. Like, that shouldn't have even existed there. Yeah, it was an accident, obviously. But it should have never existed there. Somebody was doing stuff they shouldn't have been doing because there never should be live ammo yeah. ever, even yeah. there, yeah, to get mixed up in the first place. The police are investigating, yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I know. Um, Nemi was asking in the chat room if, uh, I think it was Nemi who asked this, uh, were firearms uh, provided uh, for the training, or, or did you have to bring your own? You had to bring your own. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That, yeah. It, it's common here in New Hampshire that um, we actually, I, and it happens, of course, in other places. I'm sure it's there where you are, too. We will have training classes that are women only, no men allowed. And it's amazing what happens when you get a group of women in, in a room away from everybody else and they learn everything from safety to how to clean it, how to take it apart, how to put it back together, you know, it's yeah. just all in, and, and women become much more interested in their own personal protection when they're in a, a, 
a place where they get to express that without a fear of being um, judged. Whether it's fairly or not, women automatically assume that the guys around them are going to judge them when it comes to their mm. firearms or anything about it. Yeah. And I experienced that firsthand back in the early years. Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. First place we ever went, um, and I won't say the name of the place because I don't want to, like, say anything bad. But it was really, really early on. There was a small group of us. There was, like, maybe six of us at the time in the whole state <laughs> that yeah. got together. And we went to a place where you can... Um, get your lane, but you can also rent firearms if you want to, and you can bring your own. So we had kind of a mixture of things going on there. Um, but one of the girls is uh, extraordinarily skilled, and um, she was actually helping to teach other people. And dude literally, like, she's a gorgeous blonde. Dude literally just, like, walks up to her, and she's got a cannon in her hand practically. And and, she, and he's like, yeah, you, you want me to give you a little help with that, honey? She threw him daggers oh. like I could never believe and then proceeded to shoot the face out of the target. He walked away and didn't bother us again. But that's one instance. There have been other instances where you get some dumbass. I'm, oh, sorry. I shouldn't. Should I? Is that no, yeah. that's fine. Uh, that's fine. That, you know, tries to school the women as if they have no clue. Um, and Nemi in the chat says, I'm so psyched to be sitting here listening to Jenny talk about the great old days. We were really, really blessed, no doubt. Yeah. Oh, very yeah. nice. Very nice. Now, uh, Crystal has a question that uh, uh, Jenny and, and Billy, you both might have some insight on this. Uh, she says, um, stupid question, which there are no stupid questions. No, not at all. Can an actor tell the difference? Actually, this is a great question. Can an actor tell the difference by looking at it? Uh, at a live ammo bullet versus a blank bullet if they peeked into the gun prop as an extra safety measure? Great question, Crystal. Uh, you, you, uh, potentially, uh, if they're trained. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, uh, go, I'm sorry, go, go ahead, ahead, Billy. Go, no, no, go ahead. You know, I mean, that's that's one of the things uh, we were taught in in the class I was just in, too, is we, you treat every gun as, if, as if it was loaded, that means uh, you check it, you point it in a safe area, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's a revolver. You open that gate, or, or pop out that cylinder, and you make sure of it. You know, uh, with an automatic, uh, you uh, you uh, sl you slide it back, you and make sure it locks. Uh, stick your pinky down to the chamber to make sure that you don't feel a round in there. And if there is a round, uh, you get it the hell out of there. So, yeah, you know, and I, I would think that actors would have that same training. Uh, you know, I, that see, I don't think so because um, there are handlers that are supposed to handle the firearms and, and hand them to them. The armor. You're not the armor. The yes. Armorer, you're not yeah. supposed to take the firearm apart on set. Um, but, there were so many things I think that they did wrong in this and that he describes it as a situation where he's showing them what the, he's going to do and he pulls the hammer back, you know, yeah. and, and um, nobody had it, it. And that that bothers me because I think I, I believe that it's very likely there was it was like a hair trigger situation because he pulled that hammer back that he just, you know, it wouldn't take much at that point. But they might know the difference of what they look like, but they're not the ones that are clearing it or getting it ready for. They're told what to do. And and the armorer, right? She said, uh, you know, when she hands the gun to uh, Alec Baldwin in this case, and I assume this is standard procedure uh, in in these instances. I don't know, but you know, she says "cold gun" or announces it. Right? Right? She yells it, "cold gun." They're supposed mean, to meaning that uh, before this gun the act, is safe. right when the when the actor is going to get handed the firearm, they're supposed to announce if it's if it's cold or hot, cold yeah. being not loaded. Um, and the under, from what I've, from what they're saying, that was said to him. So it's a, com it, it's a, it's a com combination, a compounding of things that went wrong. And one thing that's interesting about firearms and firearm owners, when you have accidents, a lot of times they happen with the experienced shooter because they became a bit lackadaisical. Uh -huh. It's the new shooter who's running all of those things through their mind. Check this, put this here, do that. It's the one that's been doing it forever that skips a step without really even thinking about it. That makes sense. So yeah. That's something I've always kept in the forefront of my mind. Yeah. Just, just, just to be extra precautious yeah. for myself. Um, but in this situation, it just, the whole thing that set the entire chain of events off was live ammo on a set. Mm -hmm. so that makes me think somebody was messing around and doing like target shooting or something. Yeah. 
And that's how that got mixed up with dummies. Yeah. They, they I mean, that's, in, in my opinion, the whole cause is whoever brought live ammo onto that set. Right, right. Well, yeah, Jenny, and uh, you kind of, I what came to my mind, too, is uh, thought back to Brandon Lee and the Crow, and I'm like, didn't they learn anything from that incident? They did, but not enough, apparently. And like I said, I think that there was some, because another guy, there's another guy, not just the armor, or her assistant or another person of that that was there and is the actual person that yelled cold gun. Oh, okay. I thought she it was didn't, her. She did not hand the gun to him. It was a male working with the armor that uh, did and okay. yelled cold gun. Um, so who put, who put the live ammo in there? Who loaded the gun with a live ammo and didn't notice it wasn't a dummy? The live ammo is the root cause of everything that went wrong. And they shouldn't have any live ammo on any scent, anywhere, anyhow. There's no excuse for it. None. Zero. No reason. Nemi uh, says uh, she believes it was deliberate sabotage. Really? It's it's possible. It is. Uh, is it possible? Yes, absolutely. We don't know. Yeah. I mean, how did that live ammo? Now, her dad, the armorer's dad, I think actually makes that accusation that they believed it was sabotage. Yeah. Yeah, very well could be. Very well could be. Um, hopefully uh, someday we'll know. Um, oh, uh, Shannon McGuire in the chat room says, My 70-year-old mother, strong and healthy, both mentally and physically, took a firearm safety course and owns her own firearm. Very good. Yep, the woman that uh, the women that started years ago, the organization that I worked with, which was the Second Amendment Sisters, were grandmas. Yeah. They were grandmas that yeah. did not want the million momers to represent all women in the United States. Okay. And then Dr. Susanna Huff was, of course, involved, and it went on from there. Yeah. Um, Tom Blanchard says in the chat, when I took the hunter safety course uh, many years ago, they drilled in us, never trust anyone. Uh, oh, sorry, never trust anyone and always check for yourself. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, you never, you ever, never, ever, you're, that's, that's a basic training. You never take somebody else's word for anything. Right, right. Anything. And even yep. if you've checked it and done it yourself, you still never point a gun in the direction of somebody you want to see dead or an animal dead or anything like that. Always point in a safe direction. I don't care if you checked it 15 times. Still do it in a safe direction. It's muscle memory. It's a good habit. And it helps to cut down on accidents if that's what you make is good habits with your firearm ownership. By the way, I see a new name in the chat, uh, Flaka Rivera. Uh, can you guys uh, mention the missing girl from Manchester, New Hampshire, Harmony Montgomery, please and thanks. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll look for an update on that. We'll do that in the next uh, segment. Absolutely, thank you. We uh, we will. Uh, oh, Nemi says uh, not a lot of de developments to report, unfortunately. Um, Billy, was there a lot of law enforcement there? Is that I, I would imagine uh, that's. Um, I'd imagine there's law enforcement folks who who take part in training like this uh, that you were at over the weekend. You know, it's funny you mentioned that. that um, there weren't really anybody there that uh, were training to be police officers. Uh, these were basically, you know, I myself and other civilians there just uh, learning basic uh, gun safety there. But uh, the training I went through was was exactly how they uh, train a lot of police officers, I believe, with the Boise PD. Um, you know, the the drill of of the draw, as I call it. Um, you know, because we were, we were being taught a specific way to draw our gun if we had to, you know, sidestep, you know, how to, how exactly how you uh, pull the gun, you know. And I, I got to tell you, it, it, it was a bit rigorous for me because uh, we were we were outside Saturday morning and it was freezing. And, um, it, you know, my arthritis just started uh, just started kicking in. So, you know, it, oh. it wasn't it wasn't easy for me at that moment. But, you know, I, I just uh I just kept pushing through. Luckily, the sun was shining and it started to get warmer throughout the day. Yeah. And but uh, my arthritis was starting to hinder me a little bit, you know, and I'm standing there, you know, and um, I'm in a frozen position and uh, it, I'm hurting. But I'm just I'm just maintaining going 
going forward with everything, you know, and of course, you know, my, Dang, dude, my, don't you have indoor ranges with heat? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. But my instructor, uh, Carrie LaFamboise, that's, that's his name. Um, he, he, uh, already emphasized how, it, uh, reasons why he didn't like it, indoor ranges, but oh. I'll tell you what, um, because I was, I was having a tough time with it, you know, and then, of course, I'd start feeling the pressure. When it was time to fire, I wouldn't squeeze the trigger. I would yank the trigger, and <laughs> I would be off yeah. target. But this this is what's really interesting is what made a big difference is, you know what? I think I think my coat is, uh, is limiting my mobility, so I'm going to take it off for the draw. I did that, and that... Uh, I improved like 85, 90%. Ah, interesting. It's practice, 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 practice to draw. It's something that you need to practice. It's something you have to continue to practice. So it is muscle memory. So you can deal with if you've got where your clothing is. Like I used to, um, I, I had a, a revolver that had a shrouded hammer so it wouldn't get stuck on my sweaters, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but it really does all come down to practice, practice, practice. When you stop doing something, you're not so good at it anymore. Yeah. And and shooting just like any other sport or habit or training, that's what it comes down to is that training and that memory. Yeah. Um because in the in the heat of the moment if you are in a situation where, you know, I thankfully never had to pull my firearm on anyone. Mm -hmm. Um or haven't had to do anything like that to anyone ever in my life and I hope I never do. Uh but you in that heat of that moment you get what's called tunnel vision and you get very very, you're going to be scared. You're going to have fight, flight, and fear going on because that's what your body's going to do. Heart rate goes up, pulse goes up. Everything starts to get tunneled that it's hard to keep track of everything that's around you, behind you, or see beyond the person. That can, That's a real thing. So in those moments, if you don't have that muscle memory, if you haven't done that training, is when you can actually hurt yourself rather than help yourself in a situation or hurt others. Or hurt others, yeah. If caring is a responsibility, it's not just about you. It's about the people around you. Yeah. You exactly. need to be safe. You need to, and you should. I always recommend classes. We don't require them here, um, but a basic handgun class is good for anybody. And here in New Hampshire, that encompasses all the things that you're talking about. And we usually also have a law component where a lawyer will come in and talk about the gun laws in the state and what is what is okay and what is not okay and what's brandishing versus, you know, what it says you don't, to keep you on the right side of the law to make sure that you understand what your responsibilities are as that gun owner and, 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 you know, act appropriately in public. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Um, what was that, uh, was that talked about at all, Billy? Uh, you know, oh. Je Jenny mentioned laws and, and all that, uh, what, you know, was that part of the training this weekend? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I, I want to emphasize something else she was talking about, too. That heat of the moment, basically, where you just get that shot of adrenaline throughout your body mm. and um, your brain takes over. Like the, the first time I killed a deer, you know, I, I had been target shooting and I, you know, I bruised my shoulder due to the recoil from the rifle and all that, you know, but got myself ready. Uh, first time I shot at a deer... I didn't hear the, I barely heard, heard the noise from the rifle and I didn't feel the recoil now. And it's, and if you get in a situation where you have to pull your gun on a human being, oh, you can imagine it's a lot worse. Oh, I don't, yeah. I'm only going by what I was told. I am not speaking from experience on that, but I can just imagine how that, uh, that tunnel vision goes and, you know, obviously, you know, how they encourage hearing protection when you're out firing. If you have to fire on a human being, which I do not encourage, hope never, ha I ha never have to, you're not going to hear that shot, though. Is it, it, go it goes to that. Interesting. I've, like I've heard other people say that when the adrenaline's yeah. going, that that happens. Yeah. Those kind of situations, to, to, to give people like kind of an idea, it's not just about what happens when you pull a firearm on somebody. Anytime you're in a high stress situation like that, the first time I ever started an IV as an EMT in the field without somebody who else with me that knew how to do it when I was on my own 100 percent, I I was tunneled in. It was me, that that person, that needle, that everything. <laughs> I wasn't aware of how many other people arrived on scene until after I had successfully done that. And I started to to give 
uh, the medication, I started to breathe a little easier. But in the heat of that moment, I was so just focused that everything else was just to the wayside for me. Yeah. Uh, so yes. that's what happens in those heat of that moment. It's yeah. stressful. Yeah. But you should never, ever, ever, ever point a firearm at somebody that you don't plan to kill. If you don't plan to kill that person, do not put your gun at them. It's never, it's not okay to sit there and brandish it around and be like, oh, you know, look what I have. I'm going to get you. That's not okay. So I have a, I have a uh, strange. On my book anyway. Kind of, kind of a strange question for, for both of you. And Jenny, I've, I've never, uh, actually, I never really hear anyone talk about this. I've never heard you say anything about it, um, but I, I'll, a- I'll ask you both. Um, it, it might be a very strange question. I don't know, but I'm wondering because as we're talking about, you know, how to draw a gun properly and how to hold it properly and all the all the rules, like, do you ever watch, like, a, a police, have you ever watched a police drama or an action film and you find yourself kind of noticing the the way the actors handle the guns, the way they draw, or maybe oh, yeah. a Western? And, and yeah. you, No, we, we used to play a game where we'd identify the gun, yeah. right? So when they'd show one on screen, you'd be like, oh, that's a Glock, or that's a Ruger P340. You'd figure out what gun it is in the in the movie. But, but what, like, you look at everything. No, but what I'm wondering about is, do you ever kind of start to pick apart in your brain, yep. like, like that draw, that's not how you draw a gun. What What's that guy doing? Or, yeah, oh, yeah. Revolver's oh, got 13 yes. shots now, huh? You know, oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Really, or yeah. if their hand was really there, that, that they'd be broken right now. <laughs> that doesn't work that way. Interesting. Yeah, no, I've done that. I'm sure that, I, I, I Billy, you... Well, uh, you know, that that's another interesting thing, too, is uh, what Carrie was talking about during the class. Uh, one thing that uh, they do not approve of is uh, the is uh, holding the gun Hollywood style. Now, if you, of course, you look at pictures. I think one that comes to mind is the poster for uh, Cobra with yeah. Sylvester Stallone. He's holding the gun up upright towards... <laughs> Um, you know, just beside his head. And that's like ridiculous the way book. to hold it. Yep. Yeah. 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 Actually, it's I got a po- I got an interesting one. For you. It's probably not a positive, uh, not a popular comment to make. However, I'll make it. One of the things that I noticed in the Kyle Rittenhouse situation was his very good trigger control. And I know that sounds terrible to say because he did kill people. However, he was, if you believe, as I believe, that he was defending himself. His, he never had his finger on that trigger until he absolutely had to. Every picture you see of him, the gun is point, the muzzle's down. His hand is in appropriate position. It never hits the trigger until it's absolutely that moment when he defends himself. He had extremely good control. And that's something I noticed hmm. about watching his videos is you never see his trigger finger in the wrong place. Uh, that's interesting. And I'm sure that that came from training oh yeah no doubt no doubt but uh but yeah in the movies of course and on television it's uh you know it's all it's all about i guess holding the gun is all about how how cool it looks how rather sexy than can it look rather than uh <laughs> you know rather than uh, precision and uh uh safety and then of course tomb raider style yeah yeah <laughs> Swords in the back too. <laughs> you, ever, you, you ever see desperado with antonio banderas yes oh yes yeah, and that I mean, and that's uh, like I I know far less about far far less about guns than either of you do, but I remember watching that movie and thinking, you know, this is like it's almost like he's doing ballet with those guns, and it's um, you know it looks cool on screen, but uh, but it's not uh, realistic at all. At least no. I, I assume it's not. <laughs> you know, one of the things <laughs> we used to do, um, I know we did it with uh, my stepbrother, and I've seen it done with other people is take like a phone book or something. Well, I'm sounding old school now, phone book, uh, to a firing range and just take a you know, 22 caliber, nothing huge, and show somebody what it does, how it goes in, how it comes out, or show them what a 45 does, how it goes in, how it comes out. So you see more, uh, something that shows you a little bit more realistically than what you see on TV where somebody, you know, takes a shot and he's like, oh, I'm walking around and shooting. It, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. Right. Uh, you're hoping somebody like me shows up and saves you, but that's what you're doing. Yeah. You're not walking around shooting nothing. <laughs> yeah. Or the never-ending gun. That's my favorite. Yeah. It never runs out of bullets ever. Yeah. Yeah. 
the revolver <laughs> never runs out of bullets. And for those who don't, revolvers can't hold that much. <laughs> it's like five or six. Yeah. Some of them yeah. four. My mother-in-law so, had one that was this little uh, two-bullet, little like little derringer type little thing. Oh no, kidding! And you pulled it back, <laughs> and it was like it, that's all it did. It had one shot in it. Oh wow! <laughs> yep. There was uh, one other thing I wanted to comment on too, Matt. Yes. Is um, one situation that I often think about, and, and I understand it a lot better now since taking that class. I understand it so much better is, um, you know, I've watched several movies about Bonnie and Clyde. And, of course, I, you know, each movie that I watch, I can't tell you how factual it was. But the end result uh, could not uh, be fictionalized because, obviously, you go to that museum wherever it is and you look at that car that they were driving and you can tell it was just riddled with bullets. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can Google the uh, pictures you see their pictures of their bodies and they're full of holes. And I'm thinking, you know, Bonnie and Clyde were not good people. I understand that. But what did Frank Hamer and his, and the crew he was with, wasn't that overkill? You know, I can't yeah. think of just the no. way they, they were done, but that adrenaline rush that I was talking about is probably what took over at that moment. That makes sense because they knew that they were uh, shooting at, I mean, Bonnie and Clyde, yeah, of they course. Had, like, they, they had machine guns. They had become famous and, you know. And they were, they were, they were some evil people, man. They were, they, they killed, yeah. they, you know, so yeah. <laughs> and they had machine guns. So all they had to do was get a beat on you and start going and the cops would be gone. So yeah, yeah. it was kill or be killed in that moment, I think. Yeah, the um, the I the only Bonnie and Clyde film I remember ever watching myself is the you know the probably the most famous one with Warren Beatty, and I forget the actress now who starred with him in that. But there's Faye Dunaway. oh Faye Dunaway, thank you, Billy. There's that uh, that yeah that scene at the end of the movie where you know they, uh, it, it's it's very well done you know and and the the that film really kind of was very good at making you feel some sort of sympathy for them, even though, you know, they were not good people. But um, that, that scene where, where it's, it's about to happen, you know, they're about to, to, to die and they, and you know, that close up shot where they just, they look at each other like, Oh, this is it. It's um, a very, very powerful film. If, if you haven't seen it, I, I recommend it to anyone who hasn't watched it. But uh, by the way, Mel in the chat room says, I love when a gun uh, just starts shooting as it falls down the stairs. Oh, so yes. realistic. <laughs> Inanimate object is making itself work. Guns don't work that way. They really don't. We have a call. Let's uh, grab this before we uh, reach the end of the hour. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? I'm not. Uh, it's Ron. Hey, I'm Ron. Hi, Jenny. Hey, I only got one quick thing to say, or two things, actually. One, your TV link's not on. Maybe you know already. Oh. And um, also that I was um, flipping through the Internet stuff the other day and I uh, came across Kiss... Um, Shout it out live, shout it out loud, the movie. And I thought, geez, I wonder if you'd ever seen it because uh, it was really good. <laughs> oh, there's a million of those uh, mini uh, Kiss mini documentaries on YouTube. Yeah. I think I think Matt's oh. seen them all, to be truthful. I'm sure I've I'm seen sure them all. I'm sure he's seen like all of them. I'm yeah, sure. okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> I, I was just thinking in case you hadn't, I'd just pass on the info. All right, Ron. Thank you for the call. <laughs> All right, brother. All right. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. There's a discussion in the chat room. I think it's it's good to mention this about Kyle Rittenhouse and the firearm that was used uh, that he had in that in in that and that he killed people with. Yeah. He um, actively petitioned the court um, not to get it back, but to because you know, but to be able to destroy it. That gun had, should it go public, I'm sure would be worth a ton of money on the market. Let's face it. People oh. buy macabre things. Mm -hmm. People keep things that are nasty. I mean, that's why we can do genetic testing on some incredible executions because we still have blood samples for them. Yeah. Um, but uh, the guy that actually bought Kyle or bought the gun, I think tried to get it, wanted to get it back and claim ownership. Um, and where Kyle was found innocent, he would have a leg to stand on as well. Uh, the judge actually did side with Kyle and agreed to destroy the firearm. So it's not going to be able to go out there into the market and become oh. some kind of macabre piece. It is going to be destroyed. And I really think that was commendable. Not commendable. I shouldn't use that word. I think it was the right choice Yeah. to not allow something to become glorified. 
Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good insight. Even if even if you're all in with Rittenhouse, you don't yeah. uh, you don't want to uh, glorify something. I can like understand that. why he wouldn't want it either. I think that I think that makes sense. So, uh, what do you think, Billy? How do you feel about that? You know, um, if if somebody was to to take that firearm and and put it up on the market, I I I think. Um, you know, it, it's like it's like a big slap in the face because obviously, um, you know, we're not Kyle Rittenhouse. We don't know how he felt about uh, d- what doing what he had to do. You know, just like um, when Bonnie and Clyde were killed. You know, uh, Pete, the they brought that bullet riddled car through the middle of a town and people were running all over it. Mm-hmm. One lady ripped a button off of Bonnie's blouse, and that button later sold for. It's to the somebody recently bought it like within the last ten years for like thousands of dollars. Yeah, and I think I think that's ridiculous. So I think it's a great thing that that weapon was destroyed. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, Billy, Billy Painter, my friend, uh, this is we're we're actually at the top of the hour, so we'll uh, we'll start to wrap up with you. But um, I, was there anything about uh, your training this weekend that you wanted to mention that we didn't get to? And of course, I want you to give them a plug. Absolutely. You know, it, it sounds like uh, it sounds like it was a great place and and a, po- a very positive experience for you. Yes, yes. Uh, so it's a Watchman Tactical Training. You just type that into uh, Facebook and you can go there, and you'll find the uh, w- find the website and uh, you know, Gary uh, LaFanboys. He does doesn't just do uh, pistol training. He, he's got other forms of self defense that uh, he teaches over at uh, Rhino Jiu Jitsu, which is run actually by a good friend of mine by the name of Keith Owen. You know, so if you're in the Boise area, you want to you want to learn some extra self defense. You know, he I mean he, he's the man to go to. And um, just uh, a couple other things I just wanted to mention uh, that I I had learned too that just just makes complete sense. You know, I mean. Obviously, there you can be in an open uh, carry state like Idaho. But th- uh, there are there are establishments that say no weapons, and if you come in, they see you carrying. That they, depends they, they, on they, state. That yeah. depends on the state. But yeah, but the, also the the establishment can pr- prohibit you from coming in. Yeah. In some and, cases. Yeah. Uh, so if um, <laughs> New Hampshire is very different, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you know you walk into a store or something, they ask you. They can turn ask you to please, to, uh, you know, go put your weapon away or something, you know. Yeah. And just because you can carry a gun doesn't mean that you have to at all times. And if you go into a bar, I strongly recommend, and it doesn't matter whether or not you're drinking, do not take your gun inside of a bar. Yeah, period. I'm going to totally disagree with you on that one. <laughs> 100% I'm, disagree with you. What's Absolutely 100% disagree with you. Well, at least in Idaho. In Idaho. <laughs> well, welcome to New Hampshire, where every restaurant serves alcohol, number one. Number two, if you look up a case, I'll send you some information on it in Tennessee, where a, a lady and her her, 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 part, her husband were out having an enjoyable evening one night in Tennessee, and a man who had stalked her came in and shot her husband dead in front of her. Um, And she was legislated out of her right to be able to defend herself in that establishment simply because they served alcohol, though she was not imbibing. Had she been able to keep her firearm with her, it's questionable whether her husband would have died. However, that led to massive law change across the country, starting in Tennessee. Um, So there's a lot of good reasons why you should be able to carry. No, you should not get drunk and carry your firearm. That's just stupidity. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to protect yourself in an establishment just because they serve beer. It's a tough thing. I think you're, I, because I think uh, I'm, I'm torn on that one. I, 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 I could go either way with that. I, I, I understand what you're saying, Jenny, but I also understand the, the impulse to say, uh, you don't necessarily want to bring a gun into a bar because if you get drunk, now you're, well, let me, n- n- let n- me, now you're drunk with a gun on you. You know what I mean? Let me clarify that a little bit and, more and, for and, you. And most people don't have the discipline to say, well, I'm, I'm carrying a gun, so I'm, I'm just only going to have one drink, and then, you know what I mean? The I, only people I, I, who I can follow see... the law are the law-abiding, not the criminal. You're the only one who's going to see the sign and go, no firearms in here, okay, I'm not going to bring my firearm in here. Right. The criminal intent on doing harm doesn't give two cahoots what kind of sign you put up in your window. They don't care. Right. So when it comes down to you or the criminal and who gets to walk out of the store alive, 
that's yeah. uh, I guess whether or not you can defend yourself. No, I know, but in some cases. But on the other side of that, you, someone who I, I, the average person who's who might be carrying a gun into a bar isn't necessarily going to have the the self discipline to say I'm not going to get sloppy drunk because I have a gun on me. And next, so next I thing think you know, that's very irresponsible to you to say. Is that not what people do when they go into an establishment and drink and then get in their car and drive? Oh yeah. Okay, some people, a, a smaller number of people, but there are people out there who are absolutely irresponsible right. with their car, with their right. firearm, with themselves. Yeah. That doesn't mean you make a law denying yeah. the basic right to self-defense. Yeah, I can I can see both sides of it. I can see your side, too. I mean, you disagree with me all you want, Jimmy, but I can't <laughs> understand what you're, I can understand what you're saying, so... Let's, let's, I will share with you um, off here, I'll, and I'll and I'll post it up on Unleashed as well. Some information about that Tennessee case I was talking about, and a great book that you can read about what happened there and why the laws changed. Before we uh, before we wrap up, let's let's just uh, grab this call. Uh, hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hi, Matt. Ron, I'll be real fast. Yeah, um, I would feel a lot safer if people did not carry guns inside of a bar. Um, you realize we don't have if bars they handed in New Hampshire. Out at the door, I'd be fine with that. But I don't want to see people, you know, in the bar with guns. Because I might be the guy sitting at the end of the bar that catches a stray bullet. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. However, remember, we don't have bars in New Hampshire. We only have restaurants. There's Bars are illegal in the state of New Hampshire. You have to serve four courses of food in order to serve an alcoholic beverage in New Hampshire. So to say that means no restaurants as well. Are you comfortable well, you know, with telling you, people really they can't carry the anywhere? Word bars. So, I mean, there are, there are places in New Hampshire, like the 99 or something, they have a bar that is U-shaped that houses a lot of people. So, you know, I mean, you know, who cares so if it's not a bar? So you're who denoting the difference between food? sitting at a high top table at a bar versus sitting at a table in a chair? That's, that's, not, that's not okay. That's not logic. I'm well, sorry. It's well, not. Well, well I, I, I would just be happy if they didn't have guns in... And, and and if they didn't allow guns, because uh, and if you carry one, you know, good luck to you, because if you do have to use it, my God, it's gonna, you know, you're gonna be going through the ringer when it comes to going to court. Maybe and, uh, it's better than a pine box and everything else. It's better than a pine box. That's true. That's yeah. the alternative. Well, if yeah. I can't I defend say, myself, I'd rather hand out bats at the door. <laughs> well, I well, mean, wow. <laughs> for a lot of women, being able to carry a firearm and protect themselves is their equalizer against the criminal that would knock them hey, down, beat these, them though. up, rape them, rob them, or what have you. To, to, what? To, to have, really? To have something as violent as a gun, there are alternative. Uh, you, know, you want me to try an alternative measure to defend my life because the criminal has a greater right to life than I do? I, hey, uh, I the think there are alternatives to guns. Home. And if you're going to go into a bar and you had mace or something, it'll do the same thing. Mace does you, not you know? work on everybody. It absolutely does not work on everybody. That is absolutely untrue. It can be effective, but there are very many cases of people who are strung out on drugs and they were not affected by it whatsoever. Look at some of the police shows. You'll see cops spray people and they're still coming at them and they're still trying to kill them because it didn't stop them. Pepper spray does not necessarily save your life it can be helpful yeah but if it comes down to you or him you're saying that it's okay for the criminal to kill you because you don't have the right to defend yourself to the point of killing somebody else well i mean unless how's he going to kill you unless he has a knife or something i don't know how if they didn't allow guns inside the bars that's then not true his, his, his opportunity to kill you was really reduced we had a young lady just airlifted yesterday off of a ski off of a snow sled who apparently got an extremely bad spinal injury and had to be airlifted and at the scene wasn't able to move their legs. You knock somebody over the bar the wrong way, you can kill them. You punch somebody in the head, you can shatter their skull. You can kill them. There are lots of ways to kill people. And if someone's coming at you with a pool stick, trying to shove it at you or try to kill you with it or has a metal chair coming at you, you should have the right to defend yourself. And if I'm five foot one and you're six foot two, and you're the one coming and attacking me. I don't have the physical capacity to defend myself against you. Shouldn't I have the right to defend my life and choose to live another day over allowing the criminal to take me out? 
Well, how would you feel if you did fire your gun and you missed and you killed the guy on the other side that didn't bolt you? That was just minding his own business. Of course, I would be horrified. I mean, geez, that's a that's a that's a that's an insane question. I would like to think that I would defend myself only in an absolute situation where I had to, and I would like to think that through my training, I have the ability to see past my target. But exactly. and, and the, bottom the, line is, the is, bottom line is, the bottom line is, in that moment, is close up combat. It's not sh- shooting no, it's from not 15, true. 20 feet away. It's you, close up combat. No, so maybe not you could, true. Maybe you could go with a taser. <laughs> Honey, <laughs> when it comes down to getting raped or robbed, I will use whatever means necessary to save my life. And I will encourage every woman to do the same and never decide Outside that they're going to... Outside of gonna... a bar is different. I'm no. just talking about inside a bar. Any I'd be place, happy to, be any honest, place I have the legal right to them. be. Any place I have the legal right to be, I have the legal right to defend myself. I don't care if you're a restaurant. And, and I'll tell you, there's no such thing as a standard bar where you go in and that's all people are doing is sitting at the bar drinking. There are restaurants in New Hampshire. We don't have bars. They're illegal. We're one of seven control states. So we need to say the right information. But I will never in a million no, no, but, years I mean, I tell a woman a not to defend herself there, because you know, she that, goes to a restaurant. Like not the issue at a hand. The criminal in your book has a greater right to life than I do if they're in a restaurant. And I don't agree with you. Nor will I will tell anybody yeah. else that I would agree with that line of thought. I'm sorry. I love you. But on this one, I'm adamant. Adamant. Okay, that's cool. You're going to write, too. Even if you're wrong, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will be more than happy to All prove right, later yeah, how get, right I'm I am. I'm glad I'm not there. I might get shot. <laughs> not even close. Nice try. Nice try. All right, you guys. Be good. Take care. All right. Thanks, Ron. Bye-bye. Read from Louise from the legislature by Dr. Susanna Huff. There's one great example right there where she got to watch her parents die in front of her and were legislated out of the right to defend herself and how she ended up changing the laws in Texas and going on to be in the legislature. And I will get that case if from from Tennessee. i sorry. I apologize that I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Yet another case and another book and another series of laws across this country as a result of somebody being legislated out of their right to defend themselves and giving the criminal the greater right to life, be able to walk in there and take that life. Flacco Rivera in the chat says, the men in New Hampshire won't defend us women, so we have to defend ourselves. Uh, oh, I'd, that's a crappy uh, answer there, Lady Jane. I, I, I disagree there. We I, individuals. Easy, easy G on the couch over there. He'll defend you. He's got a couple of guns, if you know what I mean. What are you going to do, carry a guy his, around in your his, back pocket? You're his, not going to know how to defend yourself. His guns are pharmaceutically enhanced, of course. All oh, right. boy. This, <laughs> Him this, and those, there right. go the steroids again. The, the, these, the, these stories have got me a little, oh, uh, boy. A little nervous? All oh, right. A little bit, yes. All right. B- B- <laughs> B- B- Billy, we've kept you a long time. We'll, you've been very generous with your time. You have the floor, sir. Uh, I'll, I'll let you finish uh, 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 plug in that place and anything else you wanted to mention. And please plug your show, too. Yes, yes. Um, so, first off, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Carrie LaFanboys and, uh, you know, the other constru- uh, instructors, um, uh, Randy and Taylor. You guys were phenomenal. And it, it was worth, uh, you know, I, I could have taken the uh, similar course here in Twin Falls, Idaho, but it was worth uh, going 120 miles west to uh, go ahead and take this course. Much more worth it. And, um, yeah, so Watchman Tactical Training on Facebook. That's uh, who they are. If you're listening and you're in Idaho, I highly recommend them. Uh, Outlaw Radio, uh, this coming Saturday, I will be joined. I had a live discussion with Mike Miller at his humble abode there in Caldwell, Idaho. And uh, we had we had a little uh, sip of whiskey and uh, ha- had a great talk. Got to meet his wife, got to meet his kids. It was fantastic. Yeah, that's coming up this Saturday on uh, Outlaw Radio. Plus, I will also have my good friend Jericho Green. He... Um, it, He's the one who's living uh, close to the Silicon Valley and can shine some more light on that law they're trying to pass in California. All right. So that's uh, Outlaw Radio, ABS, Alpha, Bravo, Sierra, dot com. All right. Well, Billy, it is uh, always wonderful to speak with you, my friend. Thank you so much. All the way from the great state of Idaho. Thank you so much for joining us today. This has been great. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon. Yes. Take care. Love you guys. All right, we love you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, Billy Painter.
And uh, no, that was uh, that was a great discussion. And uh, like I said, I'm glad you were here for that, Jenny. Because you, you, well, you just you, troublemaker. You well, because you know so much more about that than I do. I don't to... I've only um, I've only even shot a gun on one occasion. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, why, Matt? I wasn't that into it. Well, because when I used to do that show, uh, uh, you know, I was a co-host on that show, Rock Paper Hand Grenades, with Gary Hopper. Right. And he and a couple of other folks, uh, Ross Terrio was there, and I think there was one other person there. I can't remember. And, uh, you know, went out to Gary's. And Gary really wanted me to shoot a gun because I'd never shot a gun. And, uh, you know, I and it was all right, but it wasn't, uh, you know, for me it wasn't like. Uh, was it a shooting ring or something? No, it was just uh, out at his house, you know, a little. That doesn't sound too safe. Yes, well, it is. I had a berm in my backyard when I had my house. Yeah, it's out in the woods. I, sh- I shot in my backyard all the time, but I had over five acres, so I was safe. Yeah. All right. Well, in the state of New Hampshire, you just can't shoot next to somebody else's dwelling. Like I think it's two hundred or three hundred, whatever. Know. I don't know anything about guns. That's way over my head. Gun shooting sports can actually be a lot of fun. Okay. A lot of fun. But by, by the way, you're getting some love in the uh, chat room, not only from uh, Nemi, who is very happy to hear you speak on the subject today. <laughs> I saw that. But, I uh, love you. Flocka Rivera says uh, Jenny is amazing. Uh, very knowledgeable and speaks her mind without hesitation. <laughs> Thank very you. Nice. Very nice. Thank you. All right. Well, we're we're late for a break. So what we're going to do is I'm going to play a little clip from WKRP in Cincinnati because Howard Hessman, uh, who played Johnny oh, Fever, no. passed away over the weekend. And then uh, we'll show some love to our amazing sponsors. And then when we come back, I'm going to ask Easy G if he's ever performed in Canada. I'm going to turn the tables on you, Eric. All right. Get ready Here for we that. Go. Get ready for that. That's coming up next. Don't go away. <laughs> <laughs> So, so don't worry about you having egg on your face, Eric. That's that's being a little selfish. You hear what I'm saying, man? You hear what I'm saying? See you tonight at the Taste of Downtown, my friend. <laughs> Free stuff, you know. We, we, we take care of him. We take care of him. Does he have a ticket? He, he already has a ticket. He I wants, don't have a ticket. He wants a ticket for someone that may go with him. And I told him I would try to get him a ticket. <laughs> and now he's upset. He says he has egg on his face. Welcome back, oh, everybody. Man. We are well in hour number two. Oh, Numero dos of Matt Connerton unleashed, and we are live. I didn't from know there the, was uh, an extended version from the from the studios. Oh yeah, <laughs> we are live from the studios of WMNH ninety five point three FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast ninety seven. If you're in Manchester, streaming everywhere, of course, online. Uh, hello to all of our online listeners across the nation and around the globe. You can go to my website mattconnerton.com for all of your live streaming options, social media links, content. Contact info, show archives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Today is Monday, January 31, 2022. Uh, Jenny is here at the news desk. Present. And Easy G is there on the couch. Wow. Yes, hello. <clears throat> been a long time since I've been able to say that. Easy G on the couch. Yeah, at least a couple months, yeah. Woo-hoo. Yeah, it's been more than a couple. It's it's been a long time. Is there an entertainment report? Uh, it might be a mini one, yes. Oh, wow. 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 He's on his game. I guess. Want to so. get down and dirty with me? Well, no. well let's, not go, let's not go there. Jeez. No, we don't want to get. We don't want to do that. That's, that was so last year. It's You're first... making him blush. <laughs> He's turning pink. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Easy, uh, uh, Yeah. Speaking of Daryl, he took a little tumble the other day, so I want to uh, send out some oh, uh, prayers that he's feeling better. I heard a mention of that on the morning show. Oh, no. What, yeah, did, did he fall on He fell ice? on the ice, and oh. he fractured his elbow. Oh, no. And he hurt his hip a little bit. So he, oh, no. According to um, mm. what I heard this morning, uh, he's already he's already had the, uh, oh, his, aunt, his, aunt, his relative Karen called in, mm-hmm. and he's already had the surgery, and um, he's on he's on the road to recovery, but he's, uh, he's having some rough times, so prayers for uh, the old dragon. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Absolutely. Sorry to hear that, Daryl. We love yeah, Daryl. Yeah, very. You know, uh, I've I've uh, decided just now, uh, based on that story, that when I'm Daryl's age, I'm going to walk around in bubble wrap. I've told my mom on numerous occasions I wanted to wrap you in bubble wrap. Oh, well, there you go. Yes. Well, well, yes, when I'm in my 70s, I will be. Uh, no, no, I think we should do it now. Well, I am a klutz. Yes, it's true. This so, is why we should do it now. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still young enough I can recover quickly if I do fall because I fall all the time because I'm a klutz. But uh, always remember, Daryl, no club you want to join, the Broken Bone Club. 
The broken poor Miriam club. is in that club. She's healing yes. up from her ankle break. I know she's on. I see her on the Facebook page. She's yes. getting there. Nemi was suggesting a hamster ball instead of bubble wrap. I don't know if it's practical. I don't think that would work for him. He'd end up. I mean, he wouldn't know how to stop, and then we'd have to chase him. Then if he gets near the water, then that's going to pull him out. And, oh no, it's not going to work. By the way, uh, this relates to the segment that we did with Billy Painter, and uh, thank you again, Billy, for calling in or for skyping in. That was wonderful. Always great enjoy, conversation. Uh, always enjoy talking with Billy. But uh, Rocky Huber, I just I have to read this comment because it made me laugh uh, legit. He said, what if Batman's parents had guns? Maybe his life would have been better. (laughs) But no, he wouldn't have because no. But here's the thing. He wouldn't have become Batman if his parents uh, hadn't been killed. But he wouldn't have been an orphan. I mean, I'm not saying true. Right. Being an orphan sucks. No. Yeah. I hear. Yeah. But uh, but he did become Batman. He did. He even says so in the first movie with uh, Michael Keaton. He says, "I'm Batman." And he and 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 he wasn't above doing some fisticuffies. That's right. Taking out the bad guy. That's yeah. right. Uh, if you'd like to join us today, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. You can also text me at six one seven nine one seven four four seven six. Tweet me at Matt Connerton or uh, send an email to Matt at mattconnerton dot com. And of course, you can interact and opine in the Facebook live chat. But the uh, best thing to do th- so that we may hear and enjoy your dulcet tones is to call us at 603-250-6007. I do want to remind you, of course, that we are proudly sponsored by the Hop Knot on Elm, right across the street in the Brady Sullivan. Delicious gourmet pretzels and craft beer. They have trivia night Thursday night, hosted by the great Bill Cini. Uh, don't go there today. Monday and Tuesday is their weekend, uh, but they are open Wednesday through Sunday. Great food, great service, and an amazing family that owns and operates it. What's your favorite thing at the Hop Knot, Easy G? I haven't been in a while, but when I went there the last time, I, I used to get the uh, Hop Knot uh, pretzel sandwich. Yes. Hold the bacon, though. The Hold bacon. the bacon. No bacon for you. Uh, it doesn't really agree with me that much. So. Yeah? Uh, like, too uh, much grease, I guess. Too much grease. Well, it's not the healthiest thing in the world. No, it's not, no. Yeah. What's your but, favorite uh, thing uh, there, uh, Jenny? Um, The Mac Attack. Ah, yes. With the pickle. My heart belongs to the pretzel pizza, of course. Yes. Yes, the pretzel of pizza. Of course. Of course. Absolutely. So I found an article for us for on uh, on Harmony. Oh, good. Yes. Uh, oh, good. So this is this is just a couple of days ago. Investigators released new details uh, this past Monday, meaning last week. Sorry, guys, about the search for missing seven-year-old New Hampshire girl Harmony Montgomery. The New Hampshire General uh, Attorney General's office said the investigation to date has narrowed the window of Harmony's disappearance. To a period of under two weeks in 2019. Investigators had said previously that she was last seen in October of that year during a Manchester police call for her service service at home. Last time she was seen, of course, was between November 29th, 2019 and December 10th of 2019, according to the assistant attorney general. The district attorney's office said police have since learned that Harmony's father, Adam Montgomery, and her stepmother, Kayla Montgomery, were living together with Harmony and two common children at 77 Guilford Street, where they were evicted on November 27, 2019. Please remember, folks, the people living there now are not the same people. Um, multiple people reported seeing Harmony with Adam and Kayla in the following days, but between December 6th and December 10th, they had only their two common children with them and not Harmony. Um, the... Uh, she quote, she knows what we are going to learn as the investigation continues, end quote, O'Neill said of Kayla Montgomery during her bail hearing on Monday. For this reason, investigators said they believe Harmony disappeared sometime between November 28th and December 10th of that year. Um, of course, they're asking people to keep to uh, keep their eyes out. If you see something, say something. If you know anything, please say something. Um they also mentioned that their witnesses had reported that during that time, Adam, Kayla, and the children were homeless and living out of cars, possibly in the north end of Manchester, New Hampshire. The Attorney General's office said in a press release, one of the cars was a silver 2010 Chrysler Sebring and the other a dark blue 2006 Audi S4. Investigators released stock photos of those cars but said the actual condition of the cars in 2019 was worse than the pictures, and the Sebring's real license plate was askew. They're hoping that that will jog somebody's memory in terms of if you remember seeing that vehicle or seeing the vehicle somewhere in the city or somewhere else to contact the Manchester Police Department. Um, of course, there's 
they're they're reiterating that the they're fighting against bail um and just how horrible this is as is now the tip fund is up to oh i believe it's $150,000 wow for any information that leads to finding her um and and hopefully somebody out there knows something somebody does if you there's a 24 hour tip line specifically regarding this this investigation which is 603 203 6060-603-203-6060. We all need to find her. And I hope somebody out there gets a conscience and calls in and says what they've saw because there's no way this child went missing without somebody seeing something. Right, right. I, I firmly believe that. Somebody knows something out there. Yep. Be the one that comes forward. Let's Absolutely. bring this kid home, huh? Absolutely. I know I heard in the news the other day that they saw this this cold case was like was he 20 or 40 years old that if when they found out that the person that did it is no longer with us but they they did solve it even though it was a long time ago new hampshire has a very active cold case division right there are a lot of good police detectives and officers out there that are still working on on missing cases i don't want harmonies to become that one that just lingers on i really have hope that we as a society Somebody gets together. Somebody's got some answers, and those clues lead to finding this child. Oh, I agree. The uh, the uh, somebody knows something out there. The police commissioner was on uh, on channel nine the other day. Said somebody knows something. Yep. And, and, like, I don't know if you were saying on the radio the other day or something, but the um, sometimes money talks. So this would be the total gets to a certain amount. Person says, "Say, hey, I know something. I crazy as it might seem. Sometimes you know the money has to go higher for someone to speak up." Hundred fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money. Anyway, you I know, could go down south, buy a house, and live off the savings and interest. Oh yeah, That's, I don't know. So that's the way some people think. I think you know maybe they told yeah. us that two hundred thousand. Money I'm, talks. I'm gonna say something. I don't know. I, I'd love to think that humanity, we all like, would just come forward with something because this is a child and this is horrible and this should never happen. There's been a lot of tips, but, but apparently not. Unfortunately, enough. there are people out there that won't come forward unless you give them enough money. Um, that's just truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen, uh, we've got a little bit of time left. Uh, let's, uh, I, I got yeah, a, I'm I, ready. I got a big question for you, Eric, and, yeah. it's, and it's not the Canada one. All right. Here's, here's my question for you, my friend, easy G Eric Gagnon. Uh, what's been going on? Where have you been? What's happening? Are well, you all right? Day, I was on, I was on, uh, probably on the phone too much these days. I got to cut back, but the, um, <laughs> Why you, it's funny because my phone always says the uh, has a calendar of how much time you spend on your phone. And I'm spending way too much time. So why? What? What? Why? What do you mean? What, why on your well, phone? it has, it has a has a weekly thing on how much how much time you spend on your phone. It has a graph. Why is it bad to be on your phone though? Why? Do, well, what, because I should be doing other things. But what, anyways, the uh, okay. the uh, I gotta go back to the phone store. I had to have the, uh, the fellow there set my timers back on things. When my timer was shorter, I was spending less time on the phone. Anyways. I was on the phone the other day, and the uh, you know those little thirty second videos now on Facebook. You press a button, and people sing and dance. Yes, yes, yes. Well, the you, other, the you, other day, started, I, have you started making some? No. What do you oh. call those things? Uh, TikTok. TikTok. Yeah, I like yeah. this TikTok. And the uh, the other day, G Girl was on. Yes. Cool. So I, I wrote a couple of things saying hi, how's it going, and she she uh, talked to me back because I always remember her the first time she was on there. She lost her phone. Oh yeah. In the back of it the was crazy. The, it was behind the couch. You yeah. had a hard time getting it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what right. a memory. <laughs> That's right. Yep, she's been on the she's been on the show several G -girl. times. Yeah. Yeah, G girl. Yep. She's been here many times over the years yes, actually. Yes, she's, yes. In, she's in New York My apparently sister. right now. Ah, doing her doing her thing on the radio. Uh-huh. Yes, uh, it's called the IC show. Right? Yes. And she's um and I think she's uh now she's doing a lot with this uh DTF radio. Which I think is a funny name if you know what DTF stands for. But yeah, we've I don't seen this, know. We've seen this oh. other. Video, I'll, tell, I'll tell you off the air. This other video <laughs> where, where they, they they pretend to be are really stupid in these videos and the, the lady's oh, like. Oh wait! I think I just got it. Yeah. <laughs> the lady's like cooking some food and in the in the, in the back they pretend that the oven's on fire. Uh huh. The pot's on fire, but you can tell it's nothing on. It's all it's all fake. Yeah. Have you seen those little crazy videos that go oh, like ten sure. minutes? Oh sure. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. You should. And then uh, you could talk on there, and you say. Hey, you should have your own TikTok. I don't know if it's TikTok, but it's just plain stupid. I, I, I can imagine you doing uh, silly things that would go viral. Easy's moment, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was Easy watching it for the last month or so. I said, "Wow, G girl, I know her, but I didn't know anybody else." I was Uh huh. Uh huh. You could do your own. So, are you are you out of retirement? Is this your coming out of retirement, like uh, like Macho Man Randy Savage? Uh, I like to come back once in a while. I don't, I'm not going to uh, go crazy. Once in a while, I come around. Uh huh. 
Well, why did you uh, retire to begin with? I was just a little burnt out and stuff, and uh huh. Between it's, the uh, stuff on the on, the, I was just a little burnt out. A lot of hard work. No, I was just burnt out from the uh, <laughs> this uh, craziness going on the radio. So, uh huh. Uh, the, the, the craziness going Wait, on. Wait, what? What? We were upsetting. No, 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 no. It's just the uh, the arguments that and stuff. Be upsetting. It was the arguments on on the shows would get a little too much for me. The arguments? What has there ever? I'm been not an, crying. Has there ever been an argument on this program? There's yeah, never when been it was when they were talking about stuff, and I had to leave the room, and uh, uh, it was just getting to be too much. We don't need to go in there. Uh -huh, okay. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. You don't need to mention anybody's names. Now, has uh, Peter texted you again? No. Okay. So you're definitely, are you off are you for tomorrow? Are you on the hit list? Apparently I am. Yeah, because I ruined the surprise. You're but on I, the I, S I, list. I, I think he's fine. You didn't ruin the surprise here. We had a surprise. Yes. Yeah, I should have just went on his show. It would have been easier. Oh, <laughs> we're a chop living now? Oh, I no, see how I, it is. I, I, the, I can <laughs> understand Peter's uh, perspective. has already been on this show, so, so it would kind of, I don't know. I, I, told, I don't know what he I, did, Peter. He messaged me and said, can I come on? And you said, yeah. Not anyway. our fault. Wow. It's all Easy G's fault. Yeah, Scandalous. I'd like to say a couple of things about the uh, Royal Rumble yesterday. Oh, yes. Uh, now, Ronda Rousey won and Brock Lesnar won. Yeah, right. well, there's been a lot of uh, hoopla about uh, the uh, Vince McMahon um, um, having Brock lose the belt and then enter at number 30 and throw everybody out in two minutes. They said the... Uh, should have gave somebody else a shot. Yeah. And they say the uh, to very part timers like Brock Lesnar and, and Ronda Rousey. But as much as I don't like Brock Lesnar, he's good for the business. Yes. He yes. Puts, he puts butts in the seats. As much as I don't like the guy. All right. Uh, Peter's calling in. He's got something to say to you, Eric. Oh, no. You better listen up. Easy G wears a, uh, uh, wears a bra right under his uh, tank top. Oh, <laughs> then he hung up. <laughs> I know a friend He's going to start giving out your secrets. With, mm. A friend of mine I used to work with at the Snoo Arena, well, Larry, was a big Brock Russell fan. He always told me, that, Eric, Brock's good for the business. I said, all right, all right. He is good for the business. He's best for business, as they right, say. Right, but it just seemed kind of sketchy, though, when they had him drop the belt and then have him come in at number 30. Well, and, and the only other thing I wanted to pick their brains about that, and then he had stupid um, Shane McMahon come back. He should have never been in the Royal Rumble. And then that, oh, he was? That stupid... Uh, um, <laughs> Bunny, bunny guy was back. The uh, bad, bad bunny, the rapper. Yeah, he he shows up and he. Uh, yeah, he was there, but they were like the one of the last ones in there. He, they should have never been in there at that light. And then they had that stupid uh, guy Johnny Knoxville from from uh, the uh, Jackass. Jackass. He should have never been in there either. Come on. Well, you know they're doing cross promotion for the new Jackass movie. True, and... that's true. I guess, but same same with man. I mean, come on, he's not a wrestler. Yeah, I don't know what the point of having him. Did he get a pop when his music hit? Uh, of course, and then yeah. of course he's going to be in the uh, Lemonade Chamber. He's going to be he in is? WrestleMania. He but is. The guy online on Facebook Shane? told me that he his job is to put other people up. I would hope so. But can somebody else do that though? I mean, right. I'm tired <laughs> of Shane McMahon. And the uh, they got to get they got to give. They, a lot of people are saying the F on the Royal Rumble. I was like they, they said it was horrible. And it, oh yeah, Shane McMahon was in charge of the Men's Royal Rumble, and they saying it was one of the worst ones. And uh, wow. blah blah blah. They were giving him a lot of heat. Uh -huh. The uh, and oh yeah, they were saying that Bobby Lashley won only because Roman Reigns interfered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Easy and, throwing uh, some shade. No, he sure but is. I, it, it was good to see uh, uh, Bobby Lashley win because the uh, he's a he's a good uh, wrestler, even though he's a little bit older than the other guys. Well, Bobby Lashley, of course, it was uh, Bobby Lashley versus uh, uh, I almost said Kamala. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, who was uh who, who wh wh where uh Trump was in uh Bobby Lashley's corner and McMahon was in uh uh Umaga that's who I was oh, yeah, Umaga, Umaga. Yes. when it was Bobby Lashley versus Umaga at WrestleMania whatever that was I mean it was over a decade now ago but uh and uh, Trump was there and uh in Bobby Lashley's corner but the, for the long term duration of WWE they have to push the young guys cuz a bunch of these old guys won't won't be able to wrestle anymore you know, oh yeah, the Triple H, I guess, is isn't coming back anytime soon. I I, I Facebook do the that that uh, story, and yes. uh, he's really you're an ageist. He's really sick, apparently. Yeah, too uh, bad about uh, uh, Triple well, H. Well, they took NXT away from him, so what does he have right. to come back for? Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hey, gang, just me again. Hey, Eric, Ron. good to hear your voice back oh, on the show. You, that kind of thing is cool. But hey, listen, Ronda Rousey, um, she was in MMA. What did she go into wrestling for more money or something? I mean, she was an MMA star. Yeah, she was, but the uh, she uh, wanted to try something new, and the money was uh, coming their way from WWE. 
Yeah, she's a lifelong wrestling fan, and uh, oh, yeah. you know it's a big payday for her. And apparently, less she... injury too. Yeah, yeah. But let me ask: Is there real wrestling and show wrestling? Is there such a difference, or is wrestling wrestling as we know it? Well, wrestling's wrestling, unless you're talking about amateur wrestling, you know, like they do at the Olympics. But uh, but but as far as uh, that's you... Greco-Roman wrestling. Yes. Okay. That's so different. yeah, wrestling's wrestling as we know it. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, she must be uh, looking for the cur- the purse. Oh, definitely. Yes. Yeah, but wasn't the the other one? She was the MMA is real fighting though. That's like getting decked hard. Oh, yeah. well, that's real mixed martial arts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. UFC. That's that's real. That's she, some she real. She has a baby stuff. now, so if you don't like it hitting the head, probably like gets that, decided. Hey, why you know why yeah. go get beaten up for money when I can just uh, exactly you know, find I can get money another way. Probably make more money that way, actually. And Brock oh, yeah. was he? I, I oh man, I, I hope some. You know, I guess he's all done now. But I mean, I. I would have loved to have seen him pursue his MMA career because, um, you know, he just needed more time uh, training. But he, because he was, uh, he was, he had a lot of talent. It's just, um, you know, sometimes talent and strength. It's just skill that'll get you. You know, and that's what happened with him. What was once. what was his be- last big match in in the UFC? Was it against John Jones? Or I can't even remember. Yeah, I couldn't tell you honestly. Um, no, I have that no up. clue. I, my memory isn't what it used to be, but. Uh, he, he, I know he got tapped out once, you know, by the ankle. I know he got beat up once pretty bad, his face, you know. And it's funny, his face was beat to pulp, and he smiled. He loved it. You know, he it was, well, he was, you know, but I, I, I don't know what it was. I think he was taking about four or five losses that were all, you know, but uh, Ron, enough. When they, enough. But they bring back these. He was, he, was, he, he was a reckon, you know, someone to reckon with. When they bring back these big names, they don't come back to lose. So right. When they come back, they get the money, they get the recognition, they get whatever they want. Oh, he took that loss to Mark Hunt uh, in 2016. That was his last UFC match. Um, Becky Lynch comes back. They give her the belt. You know, Ronda Rousey's going to get the belt again. They or bring, did he win that? Bring back Brock. They get the belt. So. There, there was a guy that was in MMA. I looked it up one, you know, not too long ago. And his name was Dan, and I don't remember his last name. And uh, he was a mean dude. And uh, he fought all over the country and then out of the country and Japan and everywhere else. Dan, win after win after win after Dan win. Dan Severin? I can't... Who? Was it Dan Severin? Ah, geez, that just might be. Um, he had like 40 fights and he was just win, 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 win. But in the end, um, you know, he got, he got old and uh, he ended up taking a loss. Yeah, like, geez, I... later on I'll have to look it up and double check. But uh, it was great watching this fight. Uh, you know, the guy was just bad. He had a lot of mean in him. It's not to say he was a mean person, but when you got in the ring, um, you know, things changed. Now, uh, have you ever considered fighting Easy G in the octagon? <laughs> no, I'm 58, man. I don't fight nobody. I'll turn around and walk away. Well, I think it'd be pretty fair, though, right? <laughs> how, old, how old are you, Eric? Uh, 54 this year. Yeah, see? Yeah, same decade. I think you guys should get yeah. in there and... Uh, no, and I'm not a fighter. I think, I think you guys should get in there and have a tussle. Nah. I'd pay to yeah. see that. <laughs> No, 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 no. We'll put it on and channel even 97. More so, I'd be terrified if I had to fight Jenny. <laughs> you want to <laughs> see somebody run? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Nice guy. I hear oh, you. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. Hey, guys. Thanks for your time. I'm going to uh, close and uh, listen to the show. All right, Ron. Thank you for the call. Take thanks care. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye bye. I have an interesting set of talents, oh. skills that you may not be aware of. What is that from? <laughs> Was it taken? Oh, taken. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have, uh, I think we have a call. Oh, nope. I thought we had a call, but uh, nobody there. Okay. Um, well, why do these guys like to come back? To, the old girls like to come back. Women like to come back to WWE because the uh, they get the money. Uh-huh. And because Brock was very part time, even though he's been one more than he's usually is. But surely it's not he'll be going back to Canada in his farm, but it's just, which is fine. But uh, Ronda signed a one year contract, so she'll probably just leave after that. And, but I just feel bad for the for the other woman and men that want to get somewhere like Biggie. He kind of got, got screwed out of his belt because Brock came in and they and when he went to day one, they weren't going to have him in that tournament, to, that five way tussle to lose. They've done a lot with him though, with Biggie. Seems yeah, like I think they should have keep the belt on him longer. That's just my viewpoint. Uh, let's see. Rocky Huber in the chat room is suggesting Easy G versus Fishhead Ron. <laughs> with, with Rob Dion as special guest referee. What do you, what do you say to that, EZG? Now, that's a pay-per-view main event in any arena in the country. 
<laughs> yeah, that, I, don't, I don't understand how he could not smell that fish that was rotting in his fridge. Well, that's how he'd beat you. Yeah. That's how he'd beat you. That's his uh, secret weapon. That's uh, the, he, he causes, you know, he gets you in a hold and you smell the fish and you pass out and he wins. Well, I got a new rule now. When I buy, any, when I buy anything to cook now, I either buy, buy it and cook it that night or the day after because I had a problem with, in my fridge with some chicken spoiled and it was sitting there for the whole week. So Oh, that's my new rule now. If I go to the market basket, I buy some chicken, fish, or, or pork, I buy it, I eat it, or I cook it that day in the stove, or I do it the next day. That way it don't spoil. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's a lesson, everybody. But then maybe every once in a while you can break your rule and wait two days to eat it, and then you'll feel naughty, like you're doing something bad, and it'll yeah, listen to you. Feel all, and then you'll feel rebellious. <laughs> Believe it or not, even though it's mm-hmm. in the fridge, it doesn't last forever. Food has an expiration on it. Really? Yeah. I never knew well, some that. Some people think when you put food in the fridge, it's good for like weeks, but it's not. That's what Christian thinks. Oh, oh yeah. no. Well, he's. A, well, he had, yes. He, he'll learn the hard way. He had a little. Really? Yep. It, we all do. <laughs> That's not a, not a pleasant. I don't have to clean out the fridge. Not a pleasant Matt thing to learn. Matt made him do it last time. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I, didn't, I didn't make him. I just asked him, and he did. Did it for you. That's right. I asked, and he forgets. You uh-huh. see how he is? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That's my kid. Yep. Yep. Well. <sighs> mm. <laughs> well, there you go. He still lives with us, Easy. Yeah, how long has that been now? It's been a while, right? It's been almost a year. Almost. Wow. That, We're getting like there. It seems like it's been longer than that. It does. By but the, actually, it's very nice. By the way, uh, Flaca Rivera says the freezer is better to keep meat longer. Yeah, you could uh, put your meat in the freezer, uh, yeah, Easy. I only got a small freezer. The I put my like, bread in the freezer. The freezer's mm-hmm. all like this small, so it wouldn't work. Mm-hmm. Oh, I suppose I, I never liked. I thought you were going to get a different place. Yeah, you know, I'm still working on that. But the um, the uh, I never liked for uh, freezing uh, meat and then uh, and then uh, you know taking it out of the freezer and cooking it later. So I, I, that's never really my style. Uh huh. It's not not your style of cooking. I understand. Oh, some people have a big freezer and they put all kind of meat in there. And sure, sure. They have enough for the six months. Now, how how is your uh, how is your mom doing? Because I know that she's uh, she's, she's having uh, uh, not the best of health these days, unfortunately. Still having a hard time. It, it, yeah, not, 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 not having some rough days, rough time. Yeah, unfortunately. Did it, was she able to have that surgery? She had to have surgery, right? Uh, I'm not quite sure if she had hip surgery or just kind of healed. Or, oh, okay. Not quite sure, but yeah, she has trouble walking now because her, her her leg is having some issues and the uh, so. She, my, she has to use the uh, pretty much a wheelchair around the house and you know, or a walker. She, doctor doesn't want to put in any uh, doing a lot of walking. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The trouble with her knee now and yeah. Well, she still gets around. That's awesome. Doesn't matter how you do it. You know it too. Easy. Yeah, as long true. as you can get up and move about, it's good. She's having, rough, she's having a rough time, unfortunately. Now, how is your health? You look good. You look you look strong. You look pretty pretty healthy. Yeah, I still got some issues, but who doesn't, right? <laughs> uh, well, a lot of people don't. You do, you have issues. You have issues, Maddie. You're not in that group. I have issues. I'm just clearing it out. What are my issues? You don't have. You, yes, you're you're not out of the category. I'm perfectly perfect in every way. Oh, yes, you are. You're my Maddie. Thank you. Oh boy. My Maddie. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. By the way, uh, for uh, for those who are listening but not necessarily watching, EZG is wearing his Matt Connerton Unleashed shirt. As am I, and as is Jenny, so we all match. Which wasn't planned. Was no, not planned. It wasn't planned at all. No, which is interesting and fun. Yes. See, we're all walking around with your face on us, Maddie. That's right. That's how much we love you. Yes. Well, you know, tomorrow's Chinese New Year. It is? Yep. What's the new year? We'll just, is it like no, the dragon? Holiday. No, I holiday. meant what year are we going into? Like, is it a dragon, a pig year, a boar year? Uh... I just heard, I, 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 I'm not quite sure. I just heard it was Chinese New Year. Well, you got to get, that's you. That's only half the story, man. I need the other half. <laughs> not quite sure. Yeah, I mean, really easy. You know, it, you should probably, before you just go uh, uh, appropriating uh, someone's <laughs> culture by talking about their, their calendar, you should probably learn a little bit about it. Just saying. Yeah, they, wow. had, they had the uh, they had the Disney on Ice this weekend, as you uh, people might not know. It's uh-huh. new arena, and the uh, there was quite a hoopla because of the bad weather on Saturday. People were very angry. They wanted to get their money back because they didn't feel it was uh, uh, risky to go out in this bad snow. And uh-huh. 
so I guess what they did at the last minute when uh, some people were mad about it is they were able they, they were said they were, if you're able to come to the show on Sunday the weather wasn't as bad yes but some people have spent a lot of money on tickets yes those are uh, they expensive. Happy. I remember uh, Texas Mike talking about Disney on Ice. Oh, yeah. He worked like double shifts all weekend at it. Yeah. And, and 2022 shows. is the year of the tiger in the right. Chinese zodiac. I did my due diligence. I was hoping it was the year of the cat just because I like well, that song. Well, it is song. a cat. It's a tiger. The year of the cat. Do, 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 well, I used to work there, and the Disney on Ice tickets were pretty inexpensive. But when you come in and get all the uh, the bells and whistles inside the That's arena. That's where they get you. Oh, my God. It's so expensive. Yes. Wow. Oh, I love Chinese food. It's so good. Mm. Hmm. I like the chicken <laughs> fingers. The thing that did surprise me, though, is, the, is they didn't have the shows at the, at the Palace Theater, which they usually never do, but they close on Saturday. Oh, okay. Now, and uh, that never happens because the people are already here. Right. They, they, they board them in Manchester, and then they, they come over to do the show, and then they go back to their, their dwelling. Yes. Now, are you uh, so? Are are you still following uh, April Cushman and Amanda McCarthy and all these uh, musicians? Uh yeah, I don't follow them as much as I used to, but oh. I, I still follow them. Like April was at the Celtics game the other day, so I let, I saw it on her Facebook page. Why well, she did a great job? Of course, but, they, they don't show that on TV anymore because of all the hoopla about national anthems. So. By the way, Aflaka says, uh, "Hey, at least he acknowledges it." The Chinese New Year, and Crystal says, "Just Googled Chinese New Year is tomorrow." Oh. And uh, as you said, Jenny, it is the year of the tiger. That... Which is an endangered species. Tigers are endangered? I, I didn't know that. I believe so. Oh, my goodness. Certain. I believe so. I mm -hmm. believe they're on the mm -hmm. endangered list. Uh, yes. We should enter ask our entertainment reporter. Yes. Now that he has returned. Say that again? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot to repeat. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, any thoughts, uh, Eric, about uh, wading back into the pool and resuming your entertainment report? Uh, I might do a small one here and there, but uh -huh. the uh, I'm sure you heard about the, uh, the Donald Trump having his having a little speech the other day where if he becomes president again, he would pardon the people from the, January 6th. Yes, he uh, he started out saying that he would make sure that they were treated fairly and that that went very quick to pardons if necessary. Yes. Yes. And, yes, uh, yes. Um, and then specifically specifying that Pence did the wrong thing mm -hmm. by not overturning no, I didn't hear that part. the election. Yeah. He literally said that Pence should have overturned. And, and here's his logic. Oh. Here's his logic easy. Because Congress has now got a bill in to try and keep the vice president from doing anything when every four years they get together to do the delegates for the presidential election, that told Trump in his mind that Pence could legally change the election when he had the chance and failed to do so. And if that wasn't the case, there wouldn't be a push for a law to prohibit it now. So that's, that's Trump's logic on this one. Yeah. yeah, he really uh, that kind of hurt my head to spit it out, too. Well, he really takes uh, saying the quiet part out loud to a new level. I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> and um, and then Dennis, he also called for mass mass uh, displays or, or what do you call it? Honey, help me here. Um, if if oh, if somebody should raise a charge against him, Georgia or wherever, that the people should rise up. Yeah. And, and fight against that because he has no. No, he's clean. He has done nothing wrong ever. That kind of talk uh, on his part is particularly irresponsible because uh, what what is uh, that is signaling to people is, well, let me put it this way: he's he's putting people in danger. He's putting these prosecutors in danger um, when he uh, gives these signals to his followers, which lead to things like what happened on January six. Yeah, um, it's it's really bad. It's really bad. It just keeps every time I think that he's hit a low and it can't get worse than that. It does. It just does. Yeah. But to hear him come out and give the logic that he's following hurt my brain. Yeah. Really hurt my brain. Well, I I would love for somebody to call in and explain that to me. Explain his logic to me. Tell me how you justify this in your mind. Tell me how this isn't treason. I mean, really. 
Well, it's it's, it's not uh, by the legal definition of treason. It's not. The but. things that he did and the things that he's saying now and the things that it appears that he and others were aware of, the fact that there was, what, 12, 14 illegal delegates put together? Oh, yeah. That didn't even, that's not anywhere in the United States Constitution ever, anyhow, no way, never been there. Suddenly, we can create our own delegates? That's treason. Yeah, you know, apparently uh, Giuliani was uh, orchestrating that. That's treason. You don't no hear matter it. how you slice it. You don't hear his name mentioned anymore. Giuliani? Right. <laughs> well, He's you're, praying he doesn't get disbarred. You're gonna He's already been taken off the bar, but he could get disbarred yeah, hundred percent. You're gonna you're gonna start hearing it a lot more again, I think, as as the investigation uh, goes forward. But uh yeah, it's it's all bad. But, uh, but it'll be all good when we see him behind bars or in lovely little silver handcuffs. Well, I don't know. That would be something. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit there and enjoy that. That day of that, you're going to get me a bottle of wine. You're going <laughs> to pop it open. Fair enough. All right. We are uh, we are just about out of time, so we're going to wrap up. Uh, thank you again, Billy Painter, for joining us. Uh, great discussion. Oh, by the way, too, uh, thank you uh, to a couple of uh, gentlemen on uh, the Facebook uh, for helping out this weekend. My dad needed to be shoveled out. And uh, we were able to, uh, using uh, social media, we're able to get somebody out there uh, to do that uh, for him because he's, you know, he's an hour away uh, from where we are. So I appreciate that uh, very much. And I I think he's listening right now from the uh, message that I got from him on Facebook. So, um, you know, he tries to let me know that he's listening. So uh, let's see. Easy G, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, it was fun. Yes, yes. I'm so happy to see you. Me too. Happy to see you. Absolutely. Wave hi. <laughs> nobody Easy can see. G. Nobody can see it on the radio. I mean, the radio obviously. Easy it's radio theater of the mind. That's right. <laughs> and before we go, we need to remind people tonight. Oh, yes. The Charles Richardson the Charles show. Charles Richardson show, where I am co-hosting Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 7 p.m. Eastern to 9 p.m. You can look up the Charles Richardson show on Facebook to find it. He's also on Twitch, and he's everywhere. Yes. He's literally broadcasting everywhere. He's so, and it's an awesome show, a great group of people. We have a lot of good fun. So come check it out and hang out with us live. Yeah, 7 to 9 p.m. tonight, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And and so you're, I mean, you're officially Wednesday and Friday, but you're also no, doing No, pretty much doing officially Mondays. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Excellent. It's certain, occasionally there'll be Mondays where I can't, but it seems yeah. that I'm more available than I thought I was going to be, so. Yeah, yeah. I can actually make it home in time. <laughs> Nemi, Nemi in the chat says, why, though? I don't think Nemi's... <laughs> Why? I don't think Nemi's as much of a fan of uh, of Charles as she is of this program. <laughs> more of me. There's more Ex- of me. Exactly. To love and enjoy. Exactly. And we and we, we love... know how many people just love me. And we and we yes. <laughs> and we love Charles. Bless my heart. Yes. <laughs> and uh, absolutely. And uh, all right. Well, we got to go. If you miss any part of today's show, it will be up in just a little bit at wmnhradio.org and at my website. Uh, mattconnerton.com. Easy G, don't be a stranger. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And uh, Oh, and uh, just to confirm, you will not be on the morning show tomorrow? Yeah, no, I, I was canceled. You were canceled. All you right. were canceled? <laughs> canceled oh, off of the morning G. show. That's all right. I'll, I'll come back another day. It's, no a, it's, no a, biggie. it's a new scandal. Okay. <laughs> That's it for us for now. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. I was...